Hi, welcome to the companion video for your first lab on on the guessing game. In this lab, uh, we are going to build the guessing game. Um, and if you don't know what that is, then you should probably stop watching the video, pull this up, and read through the documents. For, very important in my class that you read everything I hand you. If it's uh, if I bothered to write it, it's worth reading. Um, the guessing game. If you're watching this video tonight or you're starting lab tomorrow. You can access it by clicking it here. It brings up this URL. Um, and let's just drag that URL out for us. And it'll bring you to this page on the New York Times. And you can play the game that you, I plan on having you recreate. Okay? So, I'm, so if you haven't played it yet, pause the video right now and go and play the game. That's the very first thing you want to do. Okay. Now go on to the next page, and I explain the purpose of the game. But to summarize, humans have this weird cognitive bias where we search out for, for information. We'd like to be proven correct about things. So if you thought this sequence was a doubling se sequence because we gave you a we gave you two, four, and eight as the initial se as the initial one, you might have thought, oh, so it doubles. So I'm going to test to see if it if I if it actually does double. And you put in four, eight, sixteen, or something like that, and that what followed the rule. So then you try some other doubling sequences and then like uh, 16, 32, 64, and satisfied with your answer, you guessed it and you found out you were wrong. So this is because you didn't actually do some science to disprove your hypothesis. One of the key concepts of modern science, the idea of, of, of the scientific method of the modern scientific method is a concept called falsification. And the idea here is that you can't just tr attempt to prove your hypothesis. The only way we can make sure our hypotheses are strong is by falsifying, by attempting to falsify them. In other words, your prediction, there must be an outcome in which it could be, there must be a way it could, it could be proven incorrect, right? So for instance, we can prove the hypothesis, we could attempt to prove the hypothesis correct of this rule's it follows du a doubling sequence, you know, so by trying things that don't double, like one, two, and three. Um, but that's not enough. Maybe it was all, you also maybe need to check the hypothesis. So maybe you readjust and say, okay, maybe it's all increasing numbers. Well, you have to try to falsify that as well to make sure you've got the right one. Maybe you falsify by that by trying a decreasing sequence, or maybe a sequence that doesn't make any sense at all. But you have to try to prove it wrong. You have to look for those no's. You have to attempt to look for the no's, which is kind of counterintuitive. So we're going to make this game as uh, as an attempt to um, to review Java, but also as a way to teach yourself and teach your friends about this nice thing. So read through the rest of the document, and then come back to here. It's not too long. These are hints. And this is the rubric, so you really just have this page, and this page tells you how to use an array list in case you forgot from the lecture. Okay. One thing that you may have noticed is that, by the way, you will need to handle exceptions, which you may not have done. That was chapter ten in your previous semester. In your previous semester, and so you can handle stuff that going wrong in your program by by using a try catch block. All right, so let me show you how that would be useful in this program. Say you've got scanner kb is equal to a new scanner. OK. And I've got to import scanner now. All right, and say I want to get an int i is equal to kb dot. Well, OK, int i is equal to integer dot parse int kb dot next line. So the reason I did it like that rather than going for next int is that you really shouldn't use next int because you're also going to be using next line a lot in this in this program uh, because you're okay. The idea here is that if you attempt to use combine uh, if you attempt to use next line and next int all together, you're going to be in for a really bad time uh, because when you insert an integer. Okay, say you type in an integer and you do next int. 
it's going to read the int, but it's going to leave that new line, that enter key you pressed. So when you try to read a, uh, a next line, it's going to go, oh, there was a new line there. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it. I read the entire line, and it'll just skip reading input. F. Um, so you only ever really want to use next line, and then convert what you want to an integer when you're mixing stuff, if you're reading in different types. The other way around that is to read an int, then read a line, then read a line, and that's kind of complicated. So what I prefer to do is read everything in as a string, and then convert it. However, sometimes conversion processes can go wrong. So say we run this, OK? And OK, sorry about that. Um, say we um, got a scanner, and we're running this now. And now we, if we enter in uh, 45, this works, right? But now say we enter in. Um, Actually, let me put this outside the try catch block to show you what happens. Now, say we enter in um, Q. We get an exception, a number format exception, because you can't convert from a Q to a. N. So, say we do that over here in the try catch block now. So, this will catch any exception that gets thrown at us. So, system.out.println. Okay, so now we run this, and now we print it in Q this time, and it will. Pr and what happens is that if when you get an error, it stop the try block stops immediately, moves on to the, ca the catch block, and then the code continues on as normal. So we're going to run it twice more, once with a number. See that the, the uh, catch block doesn't execute, and but here if I put in. Um, let me just stop one more time to prove something else. Okay. So let's run it again. Three does foo does this all the try block, and then it skips the cache block because there were no errors. Here, if I put in Q. Notice that it goes, I caught the exception. It skips foo because the error happened the line above it, so it doesn't continue. The exception was caught. It says, I caught the exception. And then it prints out done because it continues on with the code. OK, so that's how you can handle any error. All right, so what about organizing the actual assignment? OK, glad you asked. So the best way I found to do this is, of course, have a giant while loop because we want to use a while loop in, um, because it's an indeterminate loop. So while our stuff is not done, okay. While not done, okay, we want to get our input using scanner. So string input, and I'm just going to leave it as foo right now. You can write the scanner yourself. Okay. So first, and so we have four possibilities, right? Our possibilities are. They enter in the word answer. They answer in the word um, previous. They answer in the word, say, they enter in three integers, so they make a guess. Then you'll make guess object out of that. And then the fourth option is that they enter complete gibberish. So, <coughs> so if input is equal, equal to, well, it's not equal, equal, right? It's dot equals because we're dealing with a string here. Dot equals. Answer. Do I handle the answer, right? And then that will end the program. So in that case, you want to switch done to true. Uh, else, if we use else ifs here because these conditions are mutually exclusive. Um, if that is, if they enter previous, we print out all the previous guesses. Okay. And then finally, if they put in well, else if input is three numbers, how do we do that? Well, you can use regular expressions to do that uh, to do that to check if the if the user input was made up of three different numbers. But so you can either read up how to do that. If you do, that will possibly be the most useful 
two or three hours you spend this entire semester. I'm not kidding. On the other hand, regular expressions are hard. So the other, if you don't want to do the extra work, the other way we can do, the other thing we can do is that we can just assume that the person entered three numbers. Okay, I, I'm not assuming you're going to use regular expressions to solve this. I'm not, uh, because that regular expressions can be a bit tricky, but they're useful. So we're just going to assume that. Uh, so we're going to use what we currently know, which is that. Okay, we'll just assume that if they put an answer, if they didn't put an answer or they didn't put in previous, then I'm just going to assume the user put in three numbers. Okay, and then what I'm going to try to do is convert those num. Is that I'm going to try to convert those numbers into something. I'm trying. I'm going to try to take uh, get take the sorry. I'm going to try to take that user input and convert it into three numbers. And if that causes an error, because say for instance your TA entered gibberish, or uh, or the user entered in a word that didn't exist, or they misspelled previous, then we will catch the exception and the program will keep going. All right. So that should help that. Remember, you want to probably break this down into a method so it doesn't get too messy, right? Because we've got all these if else clauses, we've got closet, we've got if statements and inside of a while statement, and we've got a try catch block in that instead. So um, so you're given a lot of leeway on how you want to solve it, but this is just I find if you're having trouble, then this format works. The key here is to you assume that the user put in three numbers, and then you handle it if your assumption's wrong. Um, all right. So good luck on the assignment, and ask your TA if you have any questions.